Hello, my name is Kim Coventry, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please check out my blog at fitkim.com. I have lots of articles and blog uh, information posted on there, as well as other videos, so please check that out. Today I'm going to be discussing cooking basics as far as fruits and vegetables. If you didn't get a chance to watch my first video on this, it is called Cooking Basics Utensils, so please check that out first. I'm going to be covering different topics for each part of this series, so please watch all of them, but today we're going to talk about fruits and vegetables. So to start, it is midweek for me, so I am out of about half of the fruits and vegetables I normally have. I grocery shop on Sundays and prepare some things for the week, so I am halfway through. So I normally have quite a bit more, about double this, but I will cover the essentials that I believe uh, you need to have in your kitchen. This is what I have, and fruits and vegetables is one of those things that instantly people go, ugh, I know I need to be eating more fruits and vegetables. Um, I do have an article on my site called Sneaking in the Veggies, so if you get a chance, read that. It's just some tricks that I use every day to sneak in more vegetables, and it's great if you do have a family uh, that you care for or cook for because they're also kind of hard uh, to get them to be eating that too. So check that out and that'll give you the information on how to sneak it in. But fruits and vegetables are one of those things that I just never used to eat very many of them. I didn't even have fresh green beans until I was in college. I had only eaten them out of a can. So I understand where you're coming from. I'm going to give you all the information that you need as well as a shopping list at the end of this. So make sure you print that off when you're done watching this and you'll be ready to go. So to start, this is one of my favorite things. Um, this is how I store my fresh greens, but you don't have to. Obviously when you buy them at the store, they either come in a plastic, uh, like a hard plastic container or a plastic bag. Otherwise, if you can buy it in bulk, it's usually the cheapest. It takes a little bit of preparation because you have to chop it yourself, but that you obviously can just uh, put in your own storage container when you get home or even leave it in the bag. So I tend to buy my greens in bulk because, it, like I said, it is cheaper and I like the idea that it's fresh. I mean, sometimes there's even a little bit of dirt on it, which for me that means that it hasn't been handled too much, it hasn't been processed, it's just straight out of the farmer's market, really. So this I have spinach in here right now. To give you an idea, I have this whole thing full as well as a whole other container at the beginning of the week. I'll rotate between spinach, arugula, romaine, the really green romaine. Sometimes I'll throw in kale, Swiss chard. Those I don't use as much because a lot of times I'd rather just put those in soups. But as far as what I use for my day-to-day -day salads, it's mostly spinach is really my, my base for that. So it's really preference. A lot of people don't, maybe don't like spinach or haven't really got acquired to it. A great thing to start off with would be romaine. So this, I just use this to store it in for ventilation. It keeps it better. But again, you can really use whatever you have at home. Now, as far as other fresh vegetables I always have, I always have asparagus, fresh asparagus. That's really easy to throw in the oven and cook with that. Um, fresh broccoli is great and fresh eggplant. A lot of people don't cook with eggplant, so I'm actually going to show you that in the future and it's much better than you would think. So I promise, just hang in there and you'll learn to love all of these vegetables. So other fresh ones I always have on hand that are a staple for me are tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes. You can get the larger tomatoes, you can get cherry tomatoes, whatever you like. This is something that I eat every single day. It's very, very good for you, just like the greens are. This I put in my salads. I'll top it on any dinner meal that I'm making. You can throw it in omelets, whatever you want. So definitely have tomatoes on hand. Buy a bunch of those when you go grocery shopping. As far as canned items, I don't do too much with canned items. I try to get frozen or fresh. Now, one thing I like to have on hand, it's become one of my favorite, is uh, tomatoes, canned tomatoes. And this is great because this is fire roasted, so it'll add some flavor to whatever you're cooking. But if you ever run out of tomatoes partway through the week, uh, these are stewed tomatoes actually, but if you run out of anything, you can just use your stewed tomatoes. You can put it in dishes for dinner. I even will put a little bit on, salt, uh, on a salad to add some flavor if needed. So as far as a canned item, it's going to be the stewed tomatoes. And this is one of my favorite things in the kitchen, and I find... Uh, 
Other family members really like this too is salsa. I try to get local salsa. I live in Texas, so obviously it's oh, typically pretty spicy. There's lots of great, time, uh, great kinds to try. If you do have a farmer's market in your area, go there because they always have amazing fresh salsa. Jack's is a really good brand too. It's very fresh if you have that at your grocery store. So fresh salsa, I will put this on my omelets every morning when I make an omelet. I, a lot of times, will add a couple tablespoons to a salad to give it some flavor if that's necessary, and really just for a snack as well. So it's great for that. Other items, a great trick for vegetables is to buy them frozen because they're just as healthy as fresh. And what I find is a lot of times people will try to buy vegetables and they won't end up using them throughout the week. They'll go bad and then they'll get frustrated. So to start, go ahead and stock up on some frozen veggies and that way you can see what you like. I love corn. Uh, it is a staple in our kitchen, so frozen corn is essential. And <clears throat> I have uh, some green beans here and broccoli. I find broccoli is great to throw in a stir fry. Last night I got home and didn't really have too much time to make dinner, so I threw in some shrimp, corn, broccoli, the uh, green beans here, a little bit of spice, and I had a stir fry. So really easy to do. And garlic, just have on, have on hand. Garlic stays good for a really long time, so you just buy the one head of gar garlic and you just use a clove here and there to add some flavor to your, to your meals. It'll really help out when you're making dishes at night time for your family. Now, as far as fruits, I'm going to start with the frozen ones, and we always have lots of frozen fruit in our freezer, always. Smoothies are really popular in this household. I, I think fruits are very healthy. It's a great way to get um, some antioxidants in your diet. A lot of times people say, oh, if you eat too much fruit, you're going to get fat. Well, I don't, if you're sensitive to sugar, you're going to want to limit your servings to maybe three servings, four servings a day. But if not, definitely go for lots of fruit in your diet. I have a mixed fruit bag here. Other things that are great are berries. Please always have berries in your kitchen because berries are loaded with antioxidants. They fit all kinds of disease and they just taste great. So the more color, the better. I have some frozen blueberries here and also pineapple. This is amazing in smoothies as well. That's typically what I'm going to be using is for the smoothies is this frozen fruit. Also, if I make oatmeal with the old fashioned oats, I'll top with frozen berries and it'll cool down the oatmeal, defrost the berries and add a great, a great bit of flavor. Uh, this is one of my tricks. I'll be doing some tricks along the way that will help you out is if you ever have bananas that become too ripe, they start to get kind of brown, or if you eat half of a, a banana on the other side, it's, you can't use it for anything right then, go ahead and cut it in half so you have half of a banana. Make sure you peel it, throw it in a freezer bag, and this is awesome to pop into a smoothie because smoothies you need to have some ice cubes in there or frozen fruit. Well, banana is a great base for a smoothie. I only do half at a time because uh, it is a lot of sugar but it's, it's a healthy kind of sugar. So half a banana will get you all set for that. And then my favorite thing is my fruit bowl because every day I see it, it's colorful. You can grab a piece of fruit on your way out the door. And again, it's very low. Normally it's full to the brim. I'll have avocados on here. Um, also oranges are great too and limes. But I've already used them already this week. So I've got some fresh organic apples here. Nectarines are one of my favorites. I like peaches as well. I always have lots of lemons on hand. I'll slice them, drizzle it with my salad for a topping to give it some flavor, or I'll put it in water. It's a great detoxifier. It's just a really good thing to have on hand. So lots of fruits and vegetables. And I have bananas up there. I always have tons of bananas around. And uh, just really, if I have a recipe that calls for something that's not here, then I'll make sure to buy it when I go grocery shopping. What I would suggest is start with the basics. If you're not really into fruits and vegetables right now, start with the basics, start with the things you like, build upon that, and make it your goal that every time you go to the grocery store, you try one new thing. So I love doing that. You can YouTube or Google anything. If you just say how to, uh, boil corn, for example, if you want to do corn on the cob fresh, go ahead and Google it. You will find quick, easy instructions, or you can leave me a comment and I'll make sure to do a video on that. That way you have it right on hand. So my channel for YouTube is FitCan TV. Please subscribe and you will get updated information on new videos that I post. And also please leave a comment because I would love to know what your, what your thoughts are. What do you like? 
what do you want to know more of and how can I help you? So thank you so much for listening and watching. I look forward to sharing more information with you in the future and have an amazing day.